Peche al Aqua Pazza, or Fish in Crazy Water, is a popular dinner along Italy's southern coast. Now, as the story goes, the crazy water is simply seawater that's flavored with a few aromatics. And I'm hoping today, Becky, that we're not going to use water from the Boston Harbor. I don't think that would be a good idea. <laughs> but this dish requires very little work, and we get a huge payoff. Oh, so I love it. Really nice recipe. OK. So we want to start with 12 ounces of haddock. Mm -hmm. Now, this recipe is often prepared with whole whiting, and that's an inexpensive fish, has nice, mild, sweet flesh. But since whole fish can be hard to find, that's why we're using the skin-on fillets here. OK, so we're leaving the skin on. We are skin Ooh, on. I like that. Now, if you can't find haddock, you could use branzino. Mm -hmm. You could use red snapper. Any firm white flesh fish will be really nice here. OK. So we're just going to season the fish up with a quarter teaspoon of salt. And the skin has so much collagen in it, it really gives a lot of body and flavor to the sauce. And an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper. Just get these nicely seasoned. All right, and now we will start our water-based sauce. Okay. So I have a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil, and I'm gonna add a couple cloves of garlic, just sliced up. And then an eighth of a teaspoon of pepper flakes. I'm gonna put that on medium heat. All right, so there's that sound we love. Mm -hmm. It's sizzling. All right, so now I have half of a medium onion diced up going in for just some nice subtle sweetness. A bay leaf. And I'm adding a quarter teaspoon of salt. We found a lot of recipes that add a lot of extras here, like you name it, capers, lemon, oregano, but we really found we really like a nice uncomplicated version. So the bay leaf will add a nice herbal background note and then the onion adds some nice sweet sweetness. Mm -hmm. A little bit of kick from the pepper flakes. That's right, just a tiny bit. So we're gonna let that cook for two to three minutes just until the onion starts to soften. Okay. Now here I have four ounces of grape tomatoes. You can also use cherry tomatoes. I love the grape tomatoes though because I feel they're a little bit sweeter and often I think the skins are a little bit thinner. And you know, we're using the small cherry or grape tomatoes here because they're good year round. Yeah. So they're always reliable. And they're gonna add really nice pops of sweetness and color to the dish. All right, so it's been about two minutes. You can see the onions are starting to soften here. Mm -hmm. it smells good. It smells good already, yep. So let's put those tomatoes in. And we'll let these go for another two to three minutes, just until the tomatoes start to soften a little bit. All right, so it's been about two minutes. You can see the tomatoes are softening up nicely. So let's add our water. I love how simple this is. So simple, so delicious. Very few ingredients all go in the pan, bringing out the most of every ingredient. That's right. So that was three quarters of a cup of water two tablespoons of dry white wine. We really like the nice little touch of acidity that that adds. And now we have six parsley stems. Mm -hmm. We're gonna eke out every last bit of flavor from the parsley here. And then I have one and a half tablespoons of parsley. I'm gonna add half and then we'll save half for later. All right, you can see that coming up to a boil. <laughs> Looks pretty. Very nice. And now we can add our fish. So we'll just nestle these guys in there. I told you, this is very little work. This I love is, this. Yeah. This is my kind of recipe. Yep, this is it. Now we'll just put some of that goodness on top. The fish doesn't need to be completely covered here. Okay. This is just exactly how it should look. That is really just about all we have to do now. We just let it cook. We're going to put the lid on. Came up to a boil. I'm going to lower that so it gently simmers for three to seven minutes until the fish reaches 110 degrees. Okay, it's been about seven minutes. Let's take a look here. Ooh, ooh, that looks beautiful. Also, that's a really bare simmer. Just a few bubbles here and there. At home, I think I would've been tempted to crank up the heat a little bit, but that's what you want, nice and gentle. That's right, I turned the heat down to low. We wanted it nice and gentle. And now we want the fish to be at 110. So let's see where we're at. 111, I'll take it. Nice. All right. So it's not quite done. We need the fish to be at 135 to finish cooking, but what we're going to do is slide the pan off the heat and we're gonna let that finish off heat. And what that means is you can't screw it up. It's gonna be perfect. Oh, I love that idea. Letting something finish off the heat so it slowly comes up to temperature. Yep. Also keeps it nice and moist. That's right, you can't go wrong. All right, it's been five minutes and I think our fish is perfect. Look at that, it's about 135 degrees, it's cooked all the way through. It is pretty. 
All right, so I'm gonna get rid of the parsley stems because they have done their job of giving us all their nice flavor. And we'll get rid of the bay leaf as well. I wanna eat that. All right, can I give that to you? Sure thing. Thank you, ma'am. And now remember that extra parsley that mm -hmm. we had saved? I'm just gonna sprinkle that on top. Oh, nice. I mean, that's gorgeous. It's beautiful. I can't believe how quickly that came together. Yeah, we made a really nice dinner for ourselves <laughs> yes, here. Yes, we did. Yes, you did. <laughs> I'm just gonna give it a little taste, see if it needs any more salt and pepper. Mm. That is so good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna tell you about it. I need a tiny bit of salt. <laughs> It really is. From just a water base. It's amazing it. what you can do. Yeah. Old school. Yes, that's it. All right. And I want to make sure I give you that gorgeous broth. Mm. Yeah, you definitely want to serve this in a shallow bowl because that broth looks delicious. Yeah. And now I have some nice bread for us here so we can get every last drop of that sauce. Oh, yeah. It's her dunking in. All right. Don't mind if I do. Oh, the fish is perfectly cooked. I mean, you can just flake it right off with a spoon. So mm. moist, so tender. So flavorful. Yeah, just perfect. Great for a newbie if, if you've never done fish before. Mm -hmm. Can't mess it up. That broth, mm. it has so much flavor. Mm -hmm. And that body, thanks to the collagen in the fish skin, really turned that water into a proper sauce. Mm. Oh, that's good. A little bit of heat on the back Ooh. end. You can taste the wine a little bit. Yep. You can taste the parsley and the bay leaf. Becky, this is amazing. Thank you. My pleasure. To make this simple but flavorful dish, build a braising liquid using sliced garlic and cherry tomatoes. Gently lay haddock fillets into the pan, cover and cook, then let the fish finish cooking off the heat. From America's Test Kitchen, a classic Italian recipe for pesce al acquapazza. You can find this recipe and all the recipes and product reviews from this season, along with selected episodes, at our website, americastestkitchen.com slash TV. I'm definitely making this. Oh, yeah. Thanks for watching America's Test Kitchen. What'd you think? Well, leave a comment and let us know which recipes you're excited to make, or you can just say hello. You can find links to today's recipes and reviews in the video description. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel. See you later. I'll see you later. <laughs>